Hi there, I'm just, just gotta do these settings here. Ugh. So, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I, I just really have to fix all this stuff here, and my room's a bit of a mess right now, and I'm the only person here. Ugh. All right, let's, uh, start now. So, yeah, um, previously, um, <laughs> yeah, so Chris Duckman, um, has said that he's gonna try something very different. I've seen his previous two videos, and... You got this one uploaded. Pig, Jossie, the tiger, no, see the tiger and the fish. Talks pig. So it looks like he's going to be reviewing two movies here. And Pig um, is, of course, the new movie starring Nicolas Cage out of the random movies that Nick Cage does. Nicholas. I'm Nicholas Cage. Alright, so let's see how many movies he's done officially. Alright. Actually, I'm gonna really just. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious now. How many films has Nicolas Cage done? At least 117. 117 movies. This man is like. Yeah. And recently, um, the point is, uh, recently, Nicolas Cage. I know the Cage Man has decided to kind of go to doing mostly indie films. He's decided to go back to doing indie films. You know, with uh, Mandy, for example. R Mandy was pretty good. I really did enjoy Mandy. Um, uh, yeah, and then he did uh, Primal. Do I remember that movie? Oh, yeah. Uh, forget it. I knew what it was. Then he recently just did Willy's Wonderland, which, eh, I don't know. I might check it out, I might not, who the hell even knows, and recently I've heard a, I only found out about the movie Pig, recently, and um, from what I hear, the film received universal acclaim from critics, who praised its direction, themes, and storyline with Cage and Wolf's performances, and praise, and uh, many critics called the film one of Cage's, one of the best in Cage's career, and return to form for the actor. I mean, he, you know, whatever movie Nicolas Cage does, I'll probably go check it out. That's the that's the key word. Probably. It, half the time, I don't even watch a lot of films. I, I've been trying to watch not a lot of films because I have a lot of stuff going on in my own personal life. And I just uh, realized that I have the autoplay feature because I have another video I'm going to react to. All right, let's just start this video. Let's see what Chris Suckman has to say about these two films, Pig and Josie, the Tiger and the Fish. What's going on, everybody? So as promised, I'm still going to talk about new movies, but the direction is going to change a little bit. And it's not necessarily going to be every film that you might want to hear me talk about. It's not necessarily going to be every big movie that's out. And I'm not just going to review a movie that's out just because I'll get hits. The goal for me now is to talk about movies that not only I want to see, but movies that I think you should support. Movies that could easily be overshadowed by other things that are out in the weekend. And there's enough people talking about I'm going to say it, if Chris recommends a movie, by God, I will watch it. Uh, you know, as long as Chris Tuckman recommends it to me. He's, he's probably the only critic I trust on YouTube. I actually saw his uh, review of Black Widow, and he has some fair points, and he didn't like the movie. Did I agree with most? But it's like, it's his opinion, even though I enjoyed Black Widow. But here's the thing, you can, it, I respect Chris's opinion on the film, and I'm glad that Chris is giving, like, more credit for indie filmmakers that's that's a great thing like i said uh, go check out the empty man don't believe me watch uh, chris's video on it about those movies already so let's talk about two films that i saw this week that i thought were excellent starting with josie the tiger and the fish this film follows a university student and josie a young girl who's a wheelchair that's user beautiful. who's rarely gone also did i notice something i've noticed this week, something but I thought about animated films now were, were excellent, excellent starting, starting with, with josie I'm noticing, okay, so here's the thing, when it, recently with animated films, you know, there's always this, these things that I'm, I'm going to start noticing, 
Um, I remember the first mo animated film I think I saw, which I was like, wow, that was like Wally is a film I always go back to because for that film, Andrew Stanton wanted to create, and that's why Wally is my favorite Pixar film of all time, is because it's a very unconventional mood. They actually hired uh, Roger Deakins and Dennis Mirren as visual consultants, although from what I know, Roger Deakins only consulted for like the first 20 minutes, and then Dennis Mirren came in and was like, what Roger said, or I can't remember what it was, but the fact that they got Roger frickin' Deakins as a visual consultant on a Pixar movie is amazing. From what I know, like, like for example, How to Train Your Dragon, the three How to Train Your Dragon movies are like some of my favorite films of Probably some of the best films to ever happen in cinema. You know, the fact that they went and hired Roger Deakins for that was, like, amazing. Like, the the godfather of all, like, you know, God's favorite cinematographer. <laughs> the daddy of all cinematographers, Roger Deakins. So, ever since then, I started noticing. I remember the first time I started noticing an animated film, I'm going to say. And I'm starting to notice the anamorphic bouquet here in the outline. Uh, I think was Toy Story th 4, because from what I know, the, the Pixar, I think, uh, the, the two, uh, visual, the two, uh, animation DPs were like, you know, we should take some inspiration from Anamorphics, so they would often use, uh, virtual cook lenses, uh, for Toy Story. Cook lenses. All right, so cook optics. Here it is. So I think that yeah, because like they did actually yeah the the slash eye technology. Cook lenses. Yeah, here it is. Uh, they use this these lenses for most scenes recently in Toy Story Four and um onward, and I think even um a soul. Soul was an amazing film, very beautifully. So this is what um, the lenses here, this is what they mostly look like. There's also like a special flare version of these, because uh, a two-to-one oval bokeh. And for those, who, like, for those who are confused as to what bokeh is, here's what I'm talking about. Bokeh. All right, here it is. Just to show you what it is, this is like what if you have something like rack focusing like this, this is what bokeh is. And uh, for anamorphic, if I can find it, I don't know where the I, I, I have actually I have the, the, the search here bokeh anamorphic. Um, anamorphic bokeh is usually very oval, and I love that. I love anamorphic for its, like, depth of field and its beautiful flares and the bokeh, obviously, and the distortion, the barrel distortion. That's what I love about anamorphics, and I'm right here. I'm I'm now more interested in this movie because, like, it's probably going to look beautiful. But I can notice the anamorphic bokeh here. So the fact that, like, the, like, the, you know, the artists involved in this movie went to, to great lengths to just, like, but anamorphics artifacts mostly except for the flares um damn it i'm trying to check the notifications uh, it, it'll never work all right let's just go to the video i want to see chris talk about it see the tiger and the fish this film follows a university student and josie a young girl who's a wheelchair user who's rarely gone out of the house by herself the two of them meet by accident and he eventually becomes her caretaker much to her dismay and his because she's really hard to deal with she has reason to be upset but she likes to take things out on him quite a bit, and her grandmother isn't helping anything by constantly keeping her inside the house. She has this incredible fear of a million different things that could happen to her or go wrong, and so Josie doesn't have a lot of life experience, even though she likes to say she does. The film reminded me most of A Silent Voice, which was a wonderful anime film, and I think this movie has the potential to become as popular as that movie. This was really, really good, and beautifully animated. Seeing it on a big screen was an experience I'm not going to soon forget. 
Anime loves to be very melodramatic. Everything gets very exaggerated. These films can be very sappy sometimes, and the movie definitely walks that line very carefully. It kind of felt like the best of both worlds of a silent voice and your name, but with surprisingly well-rounded characters, especially on Josie's part, because the film has a lot of opportunities to portray her as a weak person or someone in need of constant help or care. And the film is very, very careful about not portraying her in that way. In fact, she's fully capable of doing everything that she needs to do in life. But him being there kind of opens up her world as they start to sneak out and go to places like the library and she starts to learn about how things work and you uncover facets of her artistry and how much she wants to be an artist. The movie is extremely sweet. It's really well acted. I did see the English dub and the performances were super strong. And it goes a little beyond your average romance anime film in that it's not just about the romance and will they or will they not get together. It's also about allowing yourself to be creative and jumping into the deep end of creativity when you're surrounded by people who don't expect you to have any talent or don't allow you to use your talents. And without getting into any spoilers, there's a really great message when it comes to assuming that you have your life figured out and sometimes you can be thrown a curveball. And I think it's when you're offered those choices in life that you truly show who you are as a person. This movie was really, really good, and if you get a chance to see it, I think you should. I also saw the film Pig, starring Nicolas Cage, also known as a deity. Uh, the beautiful, beautiful man. He is amazing in this movie. Uh, so this movie is about a truffle hunter and his beloved foraging pig who is kidnapped. He goes out looking for this pig and starts a journey that leads to some unexpected revelations. There's a way this movie could have gone. This easily could have been the John Wick of pigs. Nicolas Cage could go out and just brutally fucking murder a bunch of people who stole this beloved pig from him. But the film is strangely and very uniquely anti-revenge, and it shows very surprising, emotionally effective ways of how one might deal with a situation like this. When you expect him to just bust into a room and start beating the shit out of people, he does things that don't necessarily make sense in the moment, but as you begin to peel away the layers of the story, there's a lot to uncover in this movie. It feels very simple on the surface, and Cage's character is a man of few words, but he has quite a bit going on. And the amount of depth and emotion to his character and Alex Wolf's character is one of the reasons the film stood out to me so much. It's also immaculately shot, especially for a first timer. This is an insanely confident debut with amazing cinematography. The entire movie just looks fucking great. And I love that Nicolas Cage is in the middle of this resurgence with films like Mandy, Color Out of Space. I really enjoyed Willy's Wonderland and this film, is probably his best performance since Joe. He's super strong in this movie and incredibly understated. So understated that at times it doesn't even feel like a performance. It's obvious why Cage is a superstar. He's just fucking phenomenal. And if you give him the right role, he's really going to shine. And Pig is a unique movie that probably won't impress everyone because... If you go into the movie expecting it to be about a guy who is just getting revenge on people who kidnapped his pig, that's really not what the film is about. Not even close. It has an unexpected dive into the underbelly of culinary arts and some of the not-so-great goings-on there that could easily, easily have been super cheesy in the wrong hands, but the film is crafted so well. And if you get a chance to see Pig... I really think you should. If not for anything, Nicolas Cage, amazing in the film. Those are two films I saw this week that I really think you guys should go out and see if you get a chance. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, but I also want to give a big thanks to the sponsor for this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey, with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including illustration, design, photography, video, freelancing, creative writing, marketing, and a whole lot more. Skillshare is curated 
specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads. And they're always launching new premium classes so you can stay focused and follow your creativity wherever it takes you. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Some top Skillshare classes I would highly recommend are portrait photography, shoot and edit Instagram worthy shots, taught by Jessica Kobisi, as well as productivity for creatives, build a system that brings out your best, taught by Thomas Frank. The first 1,000 of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. Thank you as always to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you guys for watching. Look forward to more videos very soon and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck manized. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I haven't heard that in a while, so that's good. Hey, all right. I I might check these movies out. It, it really depends. Like I said, there's lots of films that come out. It really depends on my how my faith in most critics are, and I sometimes the only time ever like more recently uh the movie Till Death. Um. Because I was like, oh, Megan Fox is in it. The last time she did a movie, it was in the form of Rogue. And I heard that the movie was very horrible, so I never saw it. But um, I remember Chris reviewed it. And, you know, uh, I remember, yeah, this is, that was like the last video. I can properly remember him doing a review and then giving it a grade. Sorry about the movie. Just the... The support here is, like, very wobbly. It's a point where I have to put, like, something under this damn thing. God, my room is dirty. I have to, like, clean this up with the whole goddamn room. But, yeah. Um, and I checked it out, and I was like, you know what? This is pretty good. And it's, it's like, yeah. So, yeah, people can say I'm, I'm mostly biased, but, A... Chris Stuckman, at this point, is the only critic on YouTube I trust, completely. And if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be checking out a lot of indie films. And, you know, I am actually wondering if he is going to review uh, the movie Old. Um, I don't want to click Rotten Tomatoes, because I, I really try not to trust the critics on there. You know what? I'm not even going to bother. I'll, I'll look at it later. Um, yeah, the newest one from M. Night Shyamalan. He'll, he'll probably review it. Maybe. Maybe not. Who knows? I, I'm definitely going to check out the movie Old. I, I hope we get something at least great from Shyamalan again. Because Split, I thought was an... Uh, no, Split, I loved. I just thought Glass was very mediocre. Because... Okay, my favorite Shyamalan film is definitely Unbreakable. That, for me, is, I think, his best film. You know, I, I know people love The Sixth Sense, but when you think about it, more people love The Sixth Sense for its twist more than its actual story. And I love Unbreakable for how it was a very unconventional film at the time. If you released it now... It would probably be a better, well-received film. I, I rank it amongst my favorite superhero films of all time. And that's why I think it's his best film, because it's a very unconventional superhero film. Because I remember hearing for Unbreakable, you know, Shyamalan was trying to do a three-act structure for it. But, you know, when he was developing it, he could never emotionally connect with Acts 2 and 3. So he just wrote it as a long superhero origin story. And it works in that way. And the fact that Disney screwed it over in the marketing is baffling to me. Why did I have to go off topic? I have no goddamn clue. But yeah, there's at least two more films I'm going to plan on checking out. Oh, looks like there's a an extra... Uh, no, no, there, there's no. It's because I saw it says 720. I thought there was an extra scene. Sorry. All right, well, I'm going to end the video here. This was, you know, another Chris Stuckman New Year review. Should I react to all these? I don't know. It really depends because, you know, I am curious to see how Chris goes moving on from this because I like the direction he's going. Some fans might not, but I will. I'll check out anything Chris does. I'll leave a link to the original video down below, link to Chris's channel. Go check the guy out. 
Please tell me he's at 2 million. Please, please, God, please. Damn it. He needs to make it to 2 million. He's nearing 2 million, and it's so slow. I, I get it. He's not reviewing big movies. But that's fine. I'm, I'm glad that Chris is, is moving on. Maybe he will watch, but he'll just, um... Would, would I review these movies? No, I mean, I review mostly big movies. But here's the thing I, I've learned from my own experience. I like to watch movies bet. I like to watch movies much better than review them. Because when I have to get the review, I'm like, well, wait, there's that, and then there's that. It's a whole long thing I don't want to get into. I'll leave a link to everything, even my Instagram. Thank you as always for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. If you do subscribe, hit that bell to stay notified, ladies and gentlemen. Godspeed. Take care.